Hi, John Schmitz for Do Something Indie. And you're probably wondering, who's Charles Johnson? Well, I'll tell you what, this interview is going to explain exactly who Charles Johnson is. And this is one of the reasons why Lisa and I started the Mars Hill Art Center, so we could reach out and we could help people in the neighborhood find themselves. And that's exactly what Charles did. I'm just so proud of how he is doing and where he's come from. So let's take a listen to that interview and you can decide for yourself. Hi, this is John Schmitz with Do Something Indie, and I have a special guest today from right here in Mars Hill. You see I have my Mars Hill Art Center shirt on, and, and uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, John, uh, Indy. Uh, my name is Charles Barton Johnson. I generally go by Bart Johnson around here, among other names, but, uh, you know. <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yes, and I'm definitely um, been all around, but I am particularly from Mars Hill. Yes, yes, so uh, i give you some background on, on uh, Bart. When I met him, uh, we had just purchased the art center about five years ago, and I'm out and back, and here comes this dude on a bike up the alley, and he's like, he's a little bit, let's say he's really, really relaxed, and there is talking about people coming to get him and different things, and I'm thinking, wow, welcome to Mars Hill. Uh, so fast forward a little bit, and uh, some things happen and give us a little bit of that how that story happened to how you turned things around well john you know it seemed like um, i got in a place in my life in this journey to where um i was at a rock bottom spot or i thought i was about the only thing left was death and in institutions uh, my addiction characteristics had overtaken me so much that i just didn't care i didn't care about my kids I didn't care about the neighborhood I lived in, the environment, people I was around, and I was around some bad people, let me tell you something. So I like to uh, joke around with people, John, and I, <laughs> I would tell them, you know, I got abducted by an alien, you know, yeah. so I was yeah. running from aliens. Yeah, I think that came I mean? up that day, I saw you behind the building, for yeah. sure. <laughs> it was, um, you know, it, was, uh, it wasn't an accident. You know, I, I noticed you guys well, let's let's just take it back before that day, John. Okay. Um, Dirty Dan, uh, Dan Evans, Daniel Evans is one of my friends. That was Dan at County Line Motors Place. Uh, that was a known drug house. Let's just uh, be honest yeah. about it and quite yeah, we, frank. Yeah, we'd say that, you know. I uh, watch certain things and situations that people in some places that were doing some things. I frequented that place a lot. Spent many nights there. So when it come up for auction, I noticed uh, the crowd of people outside, you know, and I noticed you was one of them. And then you had bought the place. Um, you know, as being a member of the art center now, um, I would consider you and Lisa as um, angels. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, um, I've been called a lot of things angels, not on the top of the list. <laughs> well, it just seemed to me that you um, moved into the neighborhood uh, that you're serving in. You provided an art center for people to go, a uh, place that were doing good things. When you do something like uh, do something into your slogan, you would want to be caught doing something good. Yeah. And let's just face it, the conversation you had of somebody that uh, you would profile to be not in a good place or space in their life, you had common courtesy and enough time to speak, uh, be cordial, have a positive word or two. And that, that's the most things about you and Lisa that stuck out to me. You awarded the win on the vote uh, for the uh, auction to get the building, which was just amazing. Yeah. You know, um, and, uh, you know, John, uh, this thing with meeting these relationships of people like you and others um, draws me to think it wasn't an accident. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think us being here is not an accident. And, and the fact that you're here and that we've both been able to benefit out of this and just full disclaimer you know bart is uh, you know he's a secretary for the mars hill art center nonprofit, so he's come a long way from then till now mm -hmm. and uh so what's what's one of the things that helped turn that corner i mean you know you've talked about the art center and what it means uh but i know there's some other circumstances that help get that turned around uh let's just face it um <clears throat> Going through enough pain 
uh, which I did, and there was an intervention, and I would love to talk about that like you asked. I'm now at a place to where I want to have persistence. Um, if you sing praise to the Lord and say hallelujah, praise the Lord, um, I just thank God to be able to thank God, John. Um, to have enough pain, I am persistent enough to go to church on Wednesday and Sundays. To go to the gun store to get the ammunition to verbally speak out scriptures and try to do things. You know, I know that God give a son. He come down to earth. He died for our sins. And he rose again. And if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you can be saved and have everlasting life. Okay, so let's just be frank about it. God had his hand on me. Okay, and when he had his hand on me, I want pleasure. Pain, persistence, and pleasure is the three things you have. If you've been through enough pain, you'll be persistent. And what comes next is pleasure. Pleasure. So I'm running these streets. Um, I thought I had a problem with authority. It wasn't authority. It was priority. I was the problem. My choices that I choose to do on a daily basis and what I went around this neighborhood doing was just not good. And let's face it, there's a lot of kids and a lot of people that, that looked up to that. And it wasn't honorable. It wasn't something that people desired. Fitting into society, working, paying, paying taxes, and doing something seems to be a big factor now. Uh, so my brother, Preacher Pete, that also started the uh, Mars Hill Youth, Wayne, <laughs> we judge um, how they do 5Ks yeah. and whatnot. Yes, and we they do 5Ks. Registered people for that. It runs right by our house out mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to do something on there. And we'll probably get Pete on here at some point to promote that. Uh, I would especially love it. as uh, the 5K season is, well, generally that's in the fall. Mm -hmm. But I know they have other things going on, the basketball programs and whatnot. So Baseball. he basically had an influence. So, mm -hmm. so how did that go down? Um, so we're going to call it Divine Intervention. Uh, Preacher Pete. Uh, started the testimony ministry church and um, giving praise to the Lord um, he created an intervention um, at church um, he said you can come to my house you're a non-felon um, you had 16 years in the union uh, and you're a non-felon if you need a place you can come to my house so I did directly didn't go after church I waited till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. You so, never show up at anybody's house at no, four in the morning. No. Unless you're the paper boy or the milkman. <laughs> okay. So, and I wasn't delivering a pizza. So, you know, uh, <laughs> the thing was, I slept on his porch. His wife come out uh, to check the mail or heard something or something and seen me there and got my brother. We had an altercation. I was sleeping, but I wasn't in the best mind frame. Yes, yes, he said, come there. So, their divine intervention is my brother, Preacher Preet. Um, you know, uh, he wanted to get me help. Uh, we've done that, Eskenazi. Uh, Eskenazi told me at one point in time I was a threat to myself or other people. Okay, so uh, this mindset of uh, drug-induced psychosis seemed to be a factor. Uh, so what happened was when the law come to get an ambulance, uh, they chased me down. I go to jail, uh, being preacher Pete, this is divine intervention. I get sent to the Wheeler Mission Hebron program a couple times. The first time I run in two months, the second time in three days. I just had dreamed and knew this, um, uh, this uh, <clears throat> instinctual value, this energy you would get off of um, the good Lord or, or things and uh, circumstances and situations. It would be one, an instinctual value is what tells someone whether they're safe or not whether to move and you know when you move I move get out of harm's way when sure it's time to get out of harm's way you, know, you would sense it you would feel it uh, you would feel when a girl's attractive and she's looking at you a man and a woman you could uh, relate it like that so uh, I just felt that I had to go I had to go back and see from my own eyes the situations my kids my baby's mother uh, these people were in and uh, it wasn't good it wasn't good each time and once I brought her back and I said look at her look at her man she's a mess I took her back to the uh, Delaware Street at uh, uh, Wheeler Mission, uh, Rick, Rick Aniston, and I said, look, Rick, man, I was right. I was right. What, what I thought was going on. You know, here's visual, like, affirmative. We got an affirmative. You can get a visual. And I need back in your program. He said, no, you broke the rules. And we're not going to bend the rules for you. So uh, at that point in time, I go back to jail after I run. I'm on house arrest. I run. The officer that arrested me pull up, Officer Chalice. I know he's an Indian man because down his shirt's Indian feathers, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, he pulls up, 
It's coming into spring. I got a house arrest bracelet on and long pants. I'm riding a bicycle. He pulls up, says, hey, man, Bart, you're looking good. What, what's going on? Well, I lied. I said, hey, Mr. Chalice, I want to thank you, man. And I'll tell you something. Uh, I'm on probation, man. I made it through a program. And he said, hey, man, let me take your picture. And he held up his iPhone. And he took my picture. And he said, wait, so show the guys. You know what I mean? And, um, well, I lied to him. I had a warrant. I absconded house arrest. I was a breach of contract. So I go down, uh, he goes down, I guess, probably show his buddies. Hey, look, I seen Bart, he's doing great. Yeah. Hey, he says, hey, by the way, he's, yeah, he's wanted. Yeah. You <laughs> should have been oh, brought him down to see us in person. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so it comes that I see him, um, had stopped my brother. Uh, and there was an opportunity in Sarasota with Chris Cranfield, one of my good friends. He brought me down there and he said, I'm, I'm going to fly you down to, Sarasota, I want to save your life. And I left in 24 hours. So this was the third attempt at a program, faith-based. Uh, and I'd always remembered that some of the things that Chris said um, was very instrumental. You know, as yeah, far as- I think sometimes the, the, at the time, you don't realize it. And our learning is, you know, we have an experience, then we reflect, and then we learn. Sometimes that experience, you don't reflect on it until you think, oh, that's what that was. And, and so what I see here is a correlation of attempts mm -hmm. that finally one of them went, boom, yes. that's how it happened. And if we're going to call this a divine intervention thing, then the third program, uh, my mom did some homework on and thank God for my mother. I love her very much. She's always had the door open for me and my brother and I. Um, and I would say that uh, she found a guy in a program, Keith Graham, Mike Smith. It was out east. It was simply divine. So this divine intervention this Simply Divine program, I found myself at 16th and Tacoma on the east side, uh, 10th and um, uh, Dearborn and Dime Life, 38th and uh, Olney, where we did, we lost a member right outside our fence, Kevin Luther, I'll never forget, we've lost Wes, we've lost Donna Singleton, I was a house manager under, so at this point I go back to a program, a program that wasn't so strict, that gave me enough freedom, that I wasn't oppressed and suppressed, where I wanted to make a choice. And when I made that choice, it was the choice that, look, I was brought up better than this. You know, John, I'll be honest with you. I sat in jail. I got interviewed for some few things. There was a beautiful woman that came there and interviewed me. And I said some very fatal attraction uh, things that just wasn't nice. It was a lustful thing. Uh, uh, but I would like to, to run into this woman again and say, hey, look, you know who, what, when, where, and e I owe you sometimes why. You know, like why at work or something. Why do you do what you do? Can you tell me your story and I'll tell you mine? You know, it was a fatal attraction thing, but this is someone who cared about me, it was instrumental. I thought about her a lot as I got out. And to have enough freedom in Simply Divine meant I had the right to choose. I had the right to choose to what went on and the way I was raised and having people. My father don't deviate. My grandparents in all my life never argued in front of us and never said a cuss word. So these people were instrumental in and setting up that for me. example, sure. but you just didn't Low choose light. to play out. <laughs> well, but it's never too late. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you've you've mm -hmm. had some some challenges, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and now things are, are doing better. You have a full time job. You work uh, construction with uh, what, what? I work for Hagerman. I'm Hagerman, actually okay. a union carpenter again. It was told to me. I would never, like I said, uh, Eskenazi deemed me a threat to myself or other people. Uh, filing disability at one point in time for mental and physical. Having had drug addictions and overdoses, three massive heart attacks, um, comas, raptomitosis, which is kidney failure, three times laying in the hospital, broke legs, hitting two cars, bumpers smashing me, um, and, overcoming And, and those are things. the things that even just knowing you, that some of those are things I have not heard from you, but those are things that uh, I've, I can sense mm -hmm. that you, you know, you, sh you have that appreciation that you should mm -hmm. be dead. Yeah. More than once. Well, uh, John, mm -hmm. it, look, let's just face it. I didn't care about myself. But you call it suicide by cop. You call it whatever you want. I found myself in due to relationships. I learned my high school girlfriend, uh, I won't say her name, was instrumental in some things. And my dad kept saying, when are you going to get rid of this guy? 
and I never understood it. Very beautiful. Well, why's, your, why's your dad going against because you? Because I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a nothing. Yeah. I'm a nobody, and the, the path I'm going is self-destruction. I seem to want to get myself into circumstances to see if I could weasel my way out, hustle my way out, finesse my way out, and it's really just sickening. And that's like, you know, you know, that's exciting though, isn't it? That's a, you know, that well, fast-paced, you know, exciting life, but it's a short-lived. Mm. Thugs excitement. don't live long. They hate it you is, live. Thugs yeah, do not live long. It's those not, bridges get mm. burnt and fields get trashed. So, so what I done with this girl uh, in our youth uh, was in my stepmom's car. We're going down Washington Street by Western High School. There was a Dairy Queen right there, and I'll never forget. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe I uh, put a hand in face uh, one day. Uh, maybe I was wrong. Uh, maybe I drove down and I did. We drove down in the middle of Washington Street, and there was a shootout. There were six or seven people on each side of Washington Street. And I grabbed her and ducked her down in the car, and I drove through a firefight. And we just unscathed. The car didn't get hit. We didn't get hit, and they're shooting over the top of us from one side to the other. I knew right then, as I think back now, that, you know, um, I long for a relationship with a good woman. You know, I need to know the story about the woman that interviewed me. Uh, you know, but I don't need that. I've asked in prayer for why don't I have that, and you know what he answered me? Because I want to have a relationship with you. First. Yeah, first, and then then that stuff will come later. So. I had a dream, and he says, uh, accept me and receive my word, and all these things will be given unto you. You know, it's what I'm hearing, and what I'm hearing is the truth, is the Bible, is the voice, is the voice that I died like Jesus in perspective, not as the same but different person, and I'm rising again as a new person. My plate was full, and my cup was full, my cup runneth over. I knocked my plate on the floor and I dumped my cup out. He's refilling my cup up with good things. Yeah, and I would even say that, you know, I, you, I knew you as Bart, but then when I found out your first name was Charles, now I call you Charles. <laughs> yes, you Because it's like, you know, like Saul and Paul. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it is, we get second chances. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been just so, I've been privileged to watch your progress. And uh, I never get too excited about progress in people because, <laughs> You know, it's it's a tough Thank road you. to hoe, Thank but you. I know that you have a focus on Jesus and that you have a focus on, you just have a determination that I see in you that you are going to go forward with this and you're going to make it happen. And not only are you going to make it happen for you, but when you, and you are at that point now where you're straightened out enough that you can help other people straighten out. And sure. I know we're going to do some stuff together. And this mm. interview here might be the start of of something. It's something good. It, I mean, it's going to be. <laughs> it is the start of something, and, and uh, but it's taken five years to get to this point. So sometimes you have to be patient. Sure. And I, and I know that we have conversations. You'll call me and say, oh, I, this, this, you have like five things. You want. I say, hey, 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 let's just calm down for a second. Let's just make sure we get to our job. Let's just make sure we do what, you know, what stabilizes us before we reach out some more. And, uh, you know, so it's just been fun to watch. And, you know, it, it's really one of the reasons why Lisa and I, are in this area is if that and i don't know if we're as much as instrumental in that as far as being an example or giving opportunity i really don't know what it is i don't know how to to explain it sometimes but uh, you know it, it's it's cool i mean it really is cool well john you said something about patience and um i would consider i don't know there's people that had doctrine in psychology right I mean, I just uh, have a master. I'm sorry. Oh, Mac. But you know, there's people, there's doctors. There's yeah, they'd rather be way smarter than me. I go to some churches, they um, are doctors, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and this psychology thing, this whole um, year old self died and rose again, there, there's salvation in uh, knowing that, well, the good Lord saved a wreck like me. And you know, I did. I had a dream in jail. And what he told me was, look, boy, are you going to have to go through prison? Just what are you going to have to go through to allow me to have a relationship with you? I've been protecting you for a long time. And I woke up and I thought, hang on a second. Are you kidding me? And then I got out and I went to that program. It was Simply Divine. I had a lawyer. His name was Jeff Pitts. I go to my brother's church and lo and behold, his <laughs> Jeff preacher's Pitt, name Jeffrey Pitts. <laughs> but a different guy yeah, with the different. same name. What? You know, and I'm like, hang on a second. This is divine intervention. <laughs> this is Preacher Pete. This is Simply Divine. Uh, so I get a sponsor. I'm in a program. I go to Diggs out here on Shelby Street. One of the Otis AA founding forefathers lineage. There are trees important. Uh, I meet a guy named Daryl. He runs the uh, Progress House. He guy says, hey, man, you won't go up to him asking to be your sponsor. Hang on, you just tell me. I said, okay, hey, Daryl, 
can you be my sponsor? He said, no, man, I'm so busy right now, but I can refer you. Let me give you a guy's number. So divine intervention was Pete Johnson. I call this guy. He said, that's for Pete. I meet him. Well, my brother's name's Pete. <laughs> my dad's name's Pete. <laughs> and my grandpa's guy. name's Pete. This guy's <laughs> name's Pete. Pete. All right, Pete and Repeat. So, yeah, I brother say we're repeat so I call on him, and he said, hey, look, man, I'll meet with you. Let's meet this uh, meeting. I meet him. He's cool. His name's Pete Johnston. <laughs> my brother's <laughs> name's Pete Johnson, but what, what's the difference? The T. The cross. Oh, the cross, yeah. The cross was the difference. It was the cross. It was showing me that placing this into your life, and in fact, this guy had such a strong testimony that it his dad come to this sponsor and said, hey, listen, whatever you did for my son, will you do for me? This is miraculous. This is inspirational. And you know what I mean? This has to be. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is like, it is, yeah, it is like you have a compilation of stories and, and, and just constant whispers and, and, and it Winks finally from comes the Lord. Down, yeah, it finally comes down to the, to the point where you've finally listened and paid attention. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I can't wait to see what happens next. So I want to thank you, Charles, mm -hmm. for coming in. Okay. And it. it's, uh, you know, it's, this is an inspiring story, folks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is, this is what it's about, <laughs> helping each other get through it because, hey, it's a, you know, we're all in the same boat. We just all need to row, right? <laughs> yes, and row together. But, John, let me tell you something. When one person with an addictive personality leaves one thing, he goes to another. And this good Lord, this helping people, this doing something, this homeless ministry, and then it'll move to prison ministry later. I'm, I'm loving it. I took the love challenge of the programming. I listened to what they said. Did it take me a minute? Yes, because if there was impediment of flow, I resisted. I wouldn't go. Now I'm starting to feel the love. I took a challenge with myself, eased, I went away, eased. So now I'm going all in, okay? And I can say, look forward to an update because I yeah. know there's going to be something yeah, there's good. A, yeah, you can, you can count on that. Okay. So thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this. And hey, Andy, go out and do something. Pretty good. Pretty All good. right, man. One take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I told you, it just flows right along, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, you know, sometimes life does just flow along. And uh, I really enjoy my conversations with Charles and uh, look forward to working with him on his next chapter in his life. And uh, as I said earlier, it's just why we are here. So I would say to you, what would you like to do in Indianapolis that you can leave a footprint, an impression, or maybe improve someone's life? So go out there and do it. And then call me and I'll promote it. So before we go, I got uh, not a bad dad joke tonight. Not a bad dad joke. What I have is more of an observation. So tell me this, you know, they sell donut holes. Why don't they sell Swiss cheese holes? What do you think about that? And if you have the answer, be sure to put it in the comments because I'd love to know. So let's see, tune in next Wednesday at 8 p.m. We'll have another show just for you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.